Howdy. It's episode number 10 already with Shopify Kryptonite with Mikko and Teemu and the Woolman team. Hi Mikko, what about the episode 10? How are you feeling already? Hello, super excited about this one. One of the favorite topics and seems to be the hot topic for 2020s in e-commerce. So very glad to be here. Perfect, perfect. Uh, we're going to be talking about subscriptions, how you can do subscriptions in Shopify, uh, how they seem to be as a business, what do you need to know to set them up. So uh, do you actually have a tip of the week or should we jump into the agenda itself? We can definitely take a tip of the week here in the very beginning. So one Good. thing uh, that Shopify is now developing, as we've learned from Reunite and all of the news, that they are uh, creating a performance dashboard where you will see like site speed and all the all the goodies you aren't able to see yet on on Shopify analytics yet. Yeah. However, this is still a summer. Summer is hot and you are able to create some sales. You want to grow during the summer. And now when you are building like landing pages or in all together like checking your page speed so there are tools for that google page speed insights is the basic tool and if you want to go more in depth or with more professional view then i would recommend gt metrics where you are able to check all of your shopify landing pages their speed and it gives you some recommendations for uh, possible adjustments to be made and that's a professional tool which we are using with all of our clients especially when creating like more heavy landing pages that are specific to a theme that might have lots of video or images so we are trying to optimize it so that it will load fast make a great customer experience that's a great tip nobody wants to lose their money on the paid ads if the if the, uh, the sites or the pages aren't loading quick enough or performing well on the uh, the customer experience side. Definitely. Uh, thank, thank you for the tip about the agenda itself. Sub subscriptions, I know that again, you've been doing some, some research behind the scenes. So how does the uh, subscription business on, on global scale seem at the moment? And then how is it looking for the future of subscription businesses? that's growing a lot so everybody most likely remembers businesses such as like one dollar shave club or harry's that were sort of like pioneers of this business and it's been told that it's one of the most growing like uh, divisions of e-commerce in this uh, decade that's just like started and we've seen a amazing growth in the us and now it seems to have arrived to europe and that pretty much means that people are more busy than they used to be. They want to live easy life. They want to make sure that they get the goods they require uh, directly to home. So that seems to be a very winning business model. And then people already have experiences from several same type of other services, such as like Spotify or Netflix. Well, I was actually just about to mention the same one. So if we have a look about, or if we have a look in Netflix, if we have a look on HBO services or any of those, uh, those are services. So I think my question here is that when we go into e-commerce, are the best subscription-based businesses, are they actually services or are they just kind of, showing a kind of a cheaper way for the customer to buy the goods by paying a monthly or bi-monthly fee for the product what do you think good question and i would answer instantly that both so it's it's like online is a great platform to share digital content and that's something that we already like have experience for many years but it's also a good way to share like products easy to ship products products that you uh, you use on daily or weekly basis that you run out of very easily that are um 
needs to ship. So that's definitely one. But we've seen in some of our customer cases also the fact that even though your core business would be physical products or even expensive physical products, you can also sell these same clients some services that then like support using those tools or products that you are selling. So like one-to-one sessions or professional guidance with them or unlocking some additional features or whatever. So you're able to sell both physical products and services to the same client, which means that you then have like two separate revenue streams. If I'm a new merchant, already have a business, or I'm a merchant who doesn't have a business, what would be kind of the first things that I would have to do in order to kind of evaluate the the commercial potential that I have in the subscri- subscription idea. Where would you yes. start? Excellent point. So when I still started with Shopify, even like doing these subscription businesses was out of reach. They weren't possible. And now it's possible. So it's supposedly easy to come up with a Shopify store, get that application there, and then start to do some sort of like pressure testing that would you be interested in this kind of a service. So we are doing sort of like market research by offering these services. Um, and then uh, before you head to the market, you should do at least some basic level market study. Uh, what should be the price range? Have anyone else done it? And in these subscription businesses, the big benefit is that they seem to remind of each other very, very much, even though you would be selling very different kind of uh, goods or services. So it would be beneficial to look at one successful case, what they have done, what can I learn from the case? And the good uh, or positive part is that you can find dozens of those already from Shopify's own blog. There are good examples. And I think if if you type in, in Google, uh subscription service or, or the most successful subscription services i think you're going to get good examples uh for the merchant side what do you think are kind of the top benefits that i can get as a merchant if i would be running subscription service based business i have a few ideas in my head but why don't you throw in a couple more with pleasure. So it's been shown that that's a very good business model. If you actually can get that running, then you usually remain or you get those clients to re- remain as your clients for a, a longer period of time. Um, in, in typical case, if your products are on a good level, they also stay very happy. You can uh, better estimate your upcoming sales, which is like amazing, because then you can like aim your marketing to certain type of, of clients who then are bringing you enough of enough of uh, profit in the more more like longer term. And it's also a good way to like offer these essential services in a way that is easy to purchase for the client. So you don't need to dig your credit card up. You don't need to always remember to purchase when it comes to your home automatically. And nowadays, even these subscription applications on Shopify have some very advanced settings where you can even pause your subscription during holidays or whatever. So it's made from client's point of view, easy to use these subscription services. And from the uh, kind of the business owner point of view, I would absolutely put emphasis on, on two things. You can build free cash flow. So you can get, you can get, paid as a business before you actually have to send anything which is totally always the best part to actually have have a business set up you're going to get cash that you use to buy the services of the goods or produce it yourself in-house and and like you said i think the best part the other other best part is that you can do forecasting on the production you can you know that you're going to have 50 or 75 first month you know that you're going to have 150 on the next year you can kind of keep look on the data all the time and like in this case if you can with with the help of you Mick, or some other talented growth hacking specialist you can kind of build a model where you can evaluate the cost and the effectiveness of the customer acquisition model then we we would absolutely have a data-driven business 
which I think is, is one of the coolest features on the subscription side, totally. Definitely. Uh, with the good parts, I think there are some limitations. So what do you see in the uh, kind of the disadvantages? Where are the weaknesses in the subscription-based businesses? Good question. So I would say that it doesn't fit all of the businesses. People have been trying to force that. In the States, you've seen like very fancy or even like stupid examples that, hey, subscription yeah. water business or subscription snacks business. And uh, they haven't been that that's much of a success. Um, so it has to be a good that you consume regularly, or it has to be a good that you have enough of variety so that you can mix and match every single month it's something different and um, that's been quite successful with some pets cases pets food or pets toys cases or clothing cases where you can then like offer different kind of varieties between those seasons so if people get like bored with your product already during the first month then that probably so that this model doesn't doesn't fit your your business too well or if it's a single purchase business if you are like talking about buying a house buying a car buying something that you all only purchase once in a lifetime then this is not the model to use and then the second thing is that at least in europe in many many of european countries people are somewhat like hesitant to to try this out so there is a entry of barrier combined taking just a one single product to enter as a subscription uh, client and for some reason i would say that the barrier is <clears throat> not like physical but it's mental so they have been able to buy these services but it feels for some reason like somehow odd to buy like physical goods as a service mm. i agree and and one of the the bad examples that i've seen is, is kind of that you try to cash with your customers creating a vip club with the monthly membership fee and then you don't actually provide anything more than a 10 percent discount for the customers which they mm -hmm will most likely get with the newsletter sign up or somewhere. So I agree with the other uh, value proposition and bringing real value. And, and therefore, I think that the real services, home delivered pet foods, uh, the dollar shaving club, uh, food packages delivered to your home, I think those are services which the customer kind of feels easier to mm -hmm. get it uh purchased because they would spend the same amount of money anyway for the same goods if they go and buy it from the local supermarket or the grocery store so kind of you have to be careful you can't force it and i think it's going to be also something you're going to see in the customer acquisition cost absolutely that is, is it a model that works or not i completely agree uh, and what about them then like Shopify? Yeah. If I would have like this kind of like amazing subscription business yeah. idea, would Shopify be my choice or should I use some other platform and why Shopify? I think it's it's the easiest platform to go with subscriptions. You're gonna need one of the add-ons applications from, from Shopify that you can actually handle the subscriptions, basically meeting the recurring payments that are behind the subscriptions. And my absolute favorite is, is a app called The Recharge, which is actually quite advanced subscription-based or subscription app. So you kind of, you build the products into Shopify already, then you go into Recharge and you set it up to be as a single purchase or a single purchase and a subscription item as well so you have the both options you can easily from the settings decide what is the uh the interval so is it, is it going to be shipped for the customer every two weeks once in a month what the pricing will be will the customer actually get a small discount uh, with the subscription compared to the, uh, the single purchase uh, it has a customer portal so if the customer has a active subscription, they can always sign into the customer portal and change it. I can skip a week if I'm on a holiday on my summer cottage. Uh, I can switch the items that I have in my subscription. I can cancel it and, and it has great APIs. It has already kind of third-party integrations 
to Klaviyo and, and to kind of all the other major tools in the Shopify ecosystem. So it's, I would say that the recharge, it's, it's once more just like just an app. It, it's kind of base model, small software system or really, and it's so well integrated to Shopify. So basically recharge is creating orders to Shopify. So kind of the fulfillment process is again then handled in the Shopify end. And then those will be regular orders that will appear there once a month, every two weeks when the customer has renewed their subscription. So, and then you know that it's so easy to put up a Shopify shop otherwise. Yeah. So kind of, I would absolutely go with Shopify. And then kind of the cases we've done as, a, as an agency is that you can kind of create a whole new customer journey having recharge in the in the background, but the customer can kind of pick the items, they can kind of, the customer can have a feel that they are kind of customizing the service that they are subscribing to. So they can either pick the items or they can pick the services. And what they're actually doing in the background is that they are picking products into their cart and they are doing, uh, they are going to the recharge checkout but we've kind of created to be a custom journey and then recharge can can flex their services in, in these kind of custom journeys and custom solutions as well. So absolutely bread and butter with Shopify. Glad to hear about that. And then I have to say that the same that with like recharge app, our clients have been super happy with that one and they are using that as, as they took go to options so that's been working very well and then like my final question would be that as a merchant how do you see can i also like uh, test this subscription model if i'm selling like physical goods as as a like side business or a sidekick uh operation before uh, concentrating on it how do you feel about yeah. that is that like technically possible yeah absolutely absolutely you can technically it's easy you can just put in the application uh you can click one of the products you already have set up in Shopify to be as all created as a sub subscription product or service as well. So you can right. kind of, I think you can do it in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, or maybe a couple of hours, but like you can do a quick pilot. And from the commercial point of view, before actually going live with the test, I would do some smoke screen testing or call a friends and family and then ask how they actually would feel about the service so if i've been selling physical goods only and i'm going to come out with the subscription service i don't want it to be looking like that i'm taking your money i want more i think it should be expressed in a way that it should be like a nice add-on service for customers uh for shop selling bikes cars you can easily add on a subscription based service to service the cars or the bikes that's easy if i'm selling clothing i think i would really kind of have to struggle to come up with a good idea that what kind of subscription service i would actually do but maybe clothing as a service that you you can pick physical goods on a monthly basis would be an idea and somebody might come up with that but yeah, you can do easy testing in a matter of hours and you're going to be good. Excellent. Perfect. I think we're going to, we're done for episode 10. So if you have any questions regarding subscriptions as a business or from technical point of view, you can email us directly or leave comments here below the video and we're going to be absolutely in touch and episode 11 maybe the email flows not sure yet but something cool will be in order in episode 11. thank you for watching and see you then be well bye bye